Hi everyone, I'm Esther Kovac and here at Amsterdam Drone Week I am talking to Jörg who is the working task lead at the JARUS uh, Safety and Risk Management Working Task. And I should say that I'm really, really fortunate to talk to him because, you know, when Lorenzo left that working task, uh, he made sure the best person takes it over. And, and he mentioned multiple times, no one is better for that role than Jörg, you know. So now I'm, I'm Really lucky to talk to Jörg and uh, Jörg. How is your life? How is how is your uh, role at Jarus? Just if someone doesn't know you, you know what is this working does doing in a daily basis. So basically, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, what we are doing at uh, Jarus, uh, the Joint Authority for Rulemaking and Management Systems, it's a corporation uh, of uh, I think 66. Um, member authorities, national aviation authorities, and international organizations. Uh, what we're doing is we are continuing development of the SORA methodology. Um, we are doing that with a team that is fairly big nowadays. Uh, I think the official uh, list of uh, people contains 140 members. Wow. We are organized <laughs> in uh, seven uh, subgroups or task forces that actually do the work. Yeah. Yes, and I heard the plenary going to be soon in Rome, no? Yes, we're all going to, yeah. the Jairus family is going to meet in Rome with uh, two nice. plenary meetings and uh, four parallel workgroup streams where the actual magic is happening. Sounds amazing. So, you know, maybe we should talk a little bit about this risk management, Sora. So, what do you think, what currently the biggest challenge is? You know, what are you working on with the working uh, task members or, or, or what is really good in Sora? You know, what do you think uh, are the next steps? Well, let's uh, try to uh, dissect these many questions. Yes. First of all, um, what are we working on? Um, the first usable version of Sora that you can actually use in uh, operational approvals was Sora 2.0 mm -hmm. that was uh, finished in the year 2019. It has been adopted by um, many nations, most prominent being EASA as the European Safety Agency. They adopted it as part of their um, uh, drone framework. So if you are a European operator, you need to go through the Sora to get approved in the specific operation category. There are some other ex uh, exceptions, but generally that's what it is. <laughs> and other nations have adopted this as well. Uh, Canada has adopted it and has their own version of the SORA. Australia has adopted it. New Zealand has. Uh, there are currently many nations that are in the process of adaptation. Uh, I heard from uh, Brazil, uh, from Israel, uh, South Africa uh, is working on it. And uh, there are many, many more actually, from big nations to small nations to create uh, a big international family, so to say. What we're currently working on, the prime objective is, now that we have been using the SORA in many nations for two years now, we have learned a lot. And the most important lesson uh, for us authors of the system is how does our baby actually work in real life? And what I found quite often is that when you give out the SORA material to applicants, to operators and to authorities, that they all interpret those requirements slightly differently. So basically what's happening is there's kind of like a zoo evolving mm -hmm. of different interpretations of how to apply SORA correctly. And some of them, uh, basically it, it taught us that we need a lot to be a lot more precise expressing what is actually expected when you use the system. Mm -hmm. So basically the ones who, you know, own the blame for this situation is of course us because <laughs> we were not specific enough to that actually write it. Version, it was know, the like first version, uh, but anyway, it works beautifully. Yes, exactly. But we've learned. So we basically um, have put our heads together for the last two years. Like, how do we incorporate those lessons learned? The first real important thing is we need to improve usability. We need to clarify the wording and, you know, describe better what is expected of um, the users of the system. Um, 
we also need to produce more guidance material, like mm -hmm. how do you actually compile a risk case? The SORA says, you know, describe your operation, yeah. then do the risk assessment, and then basically check if you have everything. Yeah. But that can take many, many forms, actually. Yeah. And so we are trying to do uh, one uh, joint recommendation of the group. You know, if you present it like that, if you write your operations manual in this form, and you present your safety, uh, your risk assessment adult in this form, it should be okay. There's it no. It leads you through the necessary. Yes, it's points. like it's a little. It, it, it's a better uh, yeah. guide, so to say. That's going to be the new Annex A that we are okay. currently working on. That's going to clarify that. There's go for no obligation to use it. So you know, if operators already have something that they're using now, there's no need to change. Yeah. But it's good to give one recommendation, especially for those that are using it for the first time, and especially if, for instance, if a nation wants to apply this for the first time. Yeah. And this is, I think, the key, Jörg, what you say, because not only for the operators, this is also for the nations, right? Who never used SORA before and want to apply it as a first time and then implement uh, the nations who don't have it, like, I don't know, Dubai or, you know, right? They would want to implement SORA to their regulation and you help them as well. Yes. Um, so basically, it is something that is often overlooked, I believe. When I ask people, like, what do you think? What's the main reason? What SORA does? Yeah. And the answer I usually get is a correct answer, and that is uh, it actually makes sure that uh, operations with drones, VLOS or BVLOS, can be uh, done safely, and that uh, whatever, you know, your entry conditions are, the size of the aircraft or where you fly, which airspace you use, that the eventual residual risk of an operation is equally low and acceptable. Yeah. That's usually what I hear, but I actually have a different take on this. There are many ways to mitigate uh, safety, and there are actually many different ways and alternatives how you could also do that. But what the SORA does is uh, a standardized process how to do this, and it creates classes of operations, for instance. We have the sale levels, the different risk levels. For instance, if you have a sale three operator, you know exactly what you need to do in order to be a sale three operator. So there will be family or many companies that say, I'm going to be a sale three operator and I can do all kinds of different sale yeah. levels, uh, operations at sale three levels without having to change my organization. It's also true for manufacturers, for instance. If you want to uh, sell an aircraft that is usable in sale three, yeah. now this sale three aircraft can be recognized by many, many nations and basically, you can take your aircraft that you've developed in Europe, that you've for operations in Europe, you can take it to Canada. And the Canadian Authority of Transport Canada will say probably, oh, look, it's based on the SORA. We are using the SORA as well. We know what a sale 3 aircraft is, you know. We only have slight differences. Uh, we will recognize yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So what the SORA's main purpose is, it discretizes the many options how to achieve safety into those risk classes and makes them interoperable. Exactly. And that will create a bigger harmonized market where drone services can be offered, you know, across regulatory frameworks. Yes. As long as they're SORA compatible, you should be able to transfer your operation to uh, another regulatory firm, to another region. Drone and the same is true for. Ones here. Yes. I talked to them in this stage, you know, here, and they were all telling, don't kill my business because if I always need to, you know, redo this, it costs me a lot of time, exactly. effort, and money. And every revenue I make, I spend on this. So I can shut down, you know, yeah. my business in two years. They said to me, you know, it's not my word. So this is what SORA enables, so it helps them a little bit, you know, towards At the least that is the plan. Is this plan yeah. without difficulties? Definitely not. Yeah. So what's happening? Is I mentioned this earlier that, you know, I found different interpretations of SORA requirements. Yeah. And take this example that I just gave. If you're taking a drone from the European market, you want to bring it to Canada, but Canada, assuming my colleagues in Canada, exp uh, excuse me for if, I, if this is not accurate. <laughs> I was trying to make an example case. People are watching from Canada. Big anyway, <laughs> anyway. So basically, if Canada is saying, well, we interpret those requirements differently of what a sale three drone yeah. is, we don't recognize your drone. Then, well, we have the same framework, yeah. but it's still not compatible. So what we need to improve is better explanations again. We have to add more guidance material on how to comply with certain requirements. 
And that, I think, will help harmonize this. I mean, it's great that we have this um, a wide area of regions of the world where the system is being used, but now the next step is we have to keep the family together, we need to talk to all the, those nations and make sure that we uh, add guidance material that everyone is eventually happy with. Yeah, and break down in a way, you know, yes. certain points, which is more usable for yeah. other nations, maybe. Yeah. Amazing, amazing year. So 2.5 gonna be the answer on that, if I understand well. So 2.5 <laughs> is well, just summing up, it has major uh, usability improvements. Yes. And the other thing is it adds a new quantitative uh, ground risk annex yes. that is optional for use, but it basically explains our logic behind the ground risk model better. And especially when you have, because SORAS is one lookup tables. Yes. It uses the, your average drones. Yes. If you have unusual drones, for instance, drones with very high wingspan and at, at very light, gross, uh, yeah. light weight uh, that are flying slowly, they are misrepresented in the SORA tables. Yes. But if you have a configuration like that, you can use the new Annex F, uh, that is it's going to be published with SORA 2.5, and basically re, you know, compute your individual risk and then discuss that um, calculation with your uh, competent authority. Okay. And that is a, a major um, improvement. Yes, yes. And it sounds very, very good. So, you know, what is the process for the 2.5? You know, if someone yes. doesn't follow, I think we must yeah. share this with the audience. So what's going on now? Consultation is closed or is it still exactly. open? So we had an unusually long uh, consultation. Okay. It, um, we um, left it open for three months because oh, wow. it was quite a big uh, document package, sorry, 2.5. And uh, over those three months that just concluded a couple of days ago, we have collected uh, close to 1,500 comments from aviation authorities and stakeholders, companies, drone manufacturers I'm worldwide. I'm give you 1,000 comments, you, Jörg. Uh, well, you know, that, <laughs> would, be very, that would be honest, very bad news you know? <laughs> because we will answer every single comment. Oh, that is wow. true. But I can, of course, only do that with the awesome team. You know, the, you our task sleep, forces you know? will be put to work and all the volunteers that we have in uh, our work group will uh, do their best. It's going to still take us a while, exactly. probably s several months before we are able to uh, do the uh, comment response. Do you have a but, time frame around by summer you think you can... Uh... Oh, that's a difficult question because <laughs> whatever I answer is probably going to be wrong. Um, <laughs> I think if we could finish all the, uh, the comments uh, the resolution, because comment resolution doesn't just mean we answer the comment. If the comments are valid and they're identifying an issue in the SORA, we have to fix it. Yes. Now, it really depends on how many serious issues there are. You know, editorial things are easy. But what if, if you have bigger problems that we yes. still need to fix? That I can only tell you after we have actually did the first comment review round. I had not had the chance to read all the comments yet, so I don't know yet. Okay, okay, no but problem. But the goal would be, it would be great if we would be able to finish uh, to have a release candidate version of SORA 2.5 ready for the upcoming plenary meeting of JARUS in the fall. Oh, well, the October, November timeframe. Okay. That would be really awesome if we would be done by that. But I cannot guarantee it right now. Yeah. We have to review what's, what we have to do first. Sure, sure, make a lot of sense. Okay, so, and what's next after, right? You, you do that, you create, you know, the new version, you present at a plenary, and you're gonna send it to YASA, right? That's, that's the next step, if I understand well. Well, or, just, you know, what happens when JARUS releases a document? Yeah. The JARUS release means that the member nations of JARUS have voted on a new document package, says, yes, we like this, this should be published. Then it's gonna be published on the JARUS website. And then this is not, you know, uh, any rule material. No, this is just, you It's know. just a document that member nations might adopt. Yes. What EASA and other uh, um, agencies and authorities are going to do, those who want to adopt 2.5 will take the JARUS document, make country-specific adoptions, you know, uh, replace certain, certain some uh, things. For instance, if we talk about competent third parties, Competent third party in Europe is translated to EASA when it is technical design or is translated to uh, the National Aviation Authority or um, an organization tasked by the National Aviation Authority. So these kind of things are translated to the regional used framework that the right wording yeah. is being used. 
So this will take those authorities some time, and then it is up to EASA and the other uh, agency authorities if they want to adopt all of it, parts of it, or in, in what, what, what time yes. frame they're doing yes. that. That yes. is out of our hands. That's, yes, yes, yes. But, you know, that's the next step. I think it's important because uh, maybe some manufacturers or others, you know, not aware of the whole process, you know, what's yeah. going to happen with the document when it's released. Jörg, anything else you want to share? You yes, know, just like an outlook. We're going to have on. one brainstorming day at the upcoming meeting of the group. And this brainstorming day will be used to say, okay, what are the next steps? Yes. One thing's for sure, after 2.5 will be version 3. Version 3 will uh, try to update, no, but we'll try, we will update uh, the ARISC annexes um, uh, C and D. Um, those are fairly old now, and uh, we have also, we have did not touch them in SORA 2.5, so this will be the main task. What we'll also do, we'll, we have to discuss this with the member nations of JARUS in the plenary meeting. We will propose doing a couple of things. For instance, I'd like to propose to uh, write a new annex, so-called Annex J, and this is going to be an annex directed at authorities and give them hints on how to implement mm -hmm, the system. Yes, mm -hmm. Because we have learned so much and we have enough authorities who went through this sometimes painful process in adopting the system, and those lessons learned from the authority point of view should be collected in the Annex J. That would be great help for uh, nations that have not adopted the system yet, if they have this kind of guidance material available. And also, we'd like to uh, work on training material for uh, interested authorities. Yes. Ma mostly, you know, to do the onboarding and get um, yes. the ones that have not, you know, joined um, the club. To the club. Uh, make, to the make, family. Make, make, make the entry <laughs> easier and nicer. Yes. yes. So those are the kind of things. There might be other ideas of what could be added. And in, in, if industry is uh, listening to this, uh, you know, influence your um, uh, national representatives uh, in the Jaros, uh, in Jaros. What are your wishes? What do you yes. think the SORA should include in the future? And uh, we will discuss it. I think it's a fantastic closing remark. Thank you so much, Jörg, for the great explanation. I think it was really educational. We learned a lot from it. And thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me, Esther.